So, why are we here today? Basically, because working with React Native, you find out that it's an amazing technology and it's super cool and everything is quite easy compared to the native land usually, but as everything in this life, it has some pitfalls, right? So today, uh, I'm gonna talk to you about the nine most common drawbacks uh, that you can, that you will face probably working with React Native, just like his Dante uh, made the same journey through the nine circles of hell with Virgil, which is, well, which was he. He is like not a master because they never meet in real life, obviously, but in this idea of Dante traveling around the inferno, everything about the chronologic uh, distances is some mess, quite mess up. So bear with me, the idea is that Dante is traveling through the inferno and Virgil is warding him and teaching him and helping him to go through each stage. Uh, what's it? The, the interesting idea of the circles of the inferno is that uh, Dante told us that it's structured uh, in nine levels. The higher levels are bigger and then it's like a cone. And the levels are, so are sorted by Mm, for us, difficulty or the pain you will suffer, something like that. Uh, so it's like the souls that were trapped in here. Um, so let's start. At the beginning, this will be the, the first level. Uh, there is a sentence in the book, in case you, you read it, the, the Divine Comedy, that says that for the one that was on the first level, the only punishment was to be far away from God. So there, when you are facing analytics in React Native, you will find that it's not something painful, that you will find that it's like something that mess up with your brain, but uh, we all come, back, come from the web environments and we are used to have things like the automatic scene detection. We call it a scene and this will see like a page. Okay, and why is that? Because uh, you don't have a URL, right, in, in a mobile phone. And if you don't have a URL, what you didn't have neither is the protocol and what you didn't have neither is the location and history object. Hence, there is no analytics that can auto track what are you doing, and the metadata around these things. So, everything is, all the metrics are event-based, which is cool. Think about Mixpanel, for example, uh, segment, and that kind, of, that, that, that kind of solutions, right? That will be the first thing. You don't have aut aut automation. Then, if you want to connect with Google Analytics, which is something very useful, if you have also a website, because you want to cross the data, right? Like this uh, user was uh, navigating like that, and then uh, he jumps to the application and comes back and wherever. This is this is painful, okay? But there are libraries that makes a cool solution for you, um, and it's painful because Google Analytics isn't designed to run in a mobile phone, right? And then the last thing, the you only have uh, very simple solutions. And what do you mean with that? Uh, imagine that you want to hook, hook for example, um, I don't know, with the camera sensor, right? The camera has a sensor for the light that is in the room, so you cannot hook easily to, to this uh, sensor. You will need to uh, make a bridge connection to the native LAN, and the native LAN send back the events, and then with these events, uh, send the metrics where if you are working with uh, native applications, the solutions for the kind of things are, well, they, they've been here for more time, so they are like more mature. Then the design, the next wing. Uh, how many of you already work with React Native? Hands up. Okay, so for the one that already work with React Native, you will notice that it's like super different paradigm, right? Designing has nothing to do with, with web. And the first thing that is super different, and it's a pain, it's the first pain, is that you don't have hierarchy. So you have a view, and you say for the view, you have a color, which is red, and you put a text, 
as a children inside the view, the text won't be read. You need to tell, to tell them again, hey, you're read, and so on, and so on, and so on. Hence, you are changing places, CSS places, uh, for object composition, right? Then you say, I have an object which says my color is red, and this is for the view. And then I say, for example, my view text extends the color and also blah, 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 and you are passing all the styles, because there are no classes, to every node that, that, that need it. Uh, so we're, here we're changing completely the mindset, so, which is important, right? Because, and, and the, no, okay, different mindset, sorry. Which is important because we have a lot of cool things that came from the web and a lot of years improving our workflows. So we have very cool SaaS and they are super well thought. We have BEM and other, uh, not technologies, but patterns, right? For styling the web. And everything is based into the class composition. I have the class is flat and the class is disabled and the class has whatever. And then I compose into the HTML everything. So here you are changing to object composition and direct assigning those styles to every node. Another thing, we're going very quickly. The, the, the other thing with the styles is the painful debugging because, well, uh, Google has a very super cool product which is called the Web Dev Tools, right? That they are inside of Chrome. And if I go to inspect something and I change the color directly or put some inline styles, it, it, will, it will apply automatically, instantly, and nothing else will change. Or if I want to change a class, we'll change everything directed to the class, right. So there is a situation in React Native that you can do something like that, which is when you have the hot model replacement uh, working, which probably, I don't know, the one person of the developers working with React Native achieve it, because you need to have like uh, very strict contracts of React Native. Everything should be a class. Everything should be properly extended. And this is not common. We, we use sometimes functional rendering or the React Native classes, or we are using a higher order component. So at the moment that you play something like that, the hot model replacement won't work. Uh, if you have the hot model replacement, you will go to your source code and say, this is now 12 instead of 20, and it will change instantly. But if you don't have it, you have to reload again. So you are in a process uh, that, that doesn't persist. If you have to reload again, you go to the beginning of the process. You have to click the process all again, right? This is painful. And less powerful, why less powerful? This can be solved with, with some libraries, but uh, behind the curtains, React Native is using a library that's called Facebook Yoga. And this is the one in charge of controlling all the styling. And Yoga doesn't support right now neither media queries, uh, neither pseudo selectors, neither styles, mm, and l like you know the, these things of CSS that they are they are not part of the core of CSS. But you have some some libraries that can solve this for you. But it will be well mm, bad for the performance. Basically because they are hooked into a thing that's called dimensions and platform from React Native. And behind the curtains again, this is hooking up to the device for like all the, almost all the events of the phone. So it's, it's not, well, it won't, kill, it won't kill your performance, but if you're doing something like a video game or with an uh, application with a lot of animations, it will be expensive for the, for the phone. Next. We are still in the, in the ground of you're not suffering too much, right? Native tools. So here comes the native LAN. With native tools and native LAN, we're talking about, uh, I want, for example, use the rendering audit of uh, Android, or I want to make some network inspections. Making an inspection of a network, it's a, it's a pain. It's, easy, it's more easy to go and place a console log on the, on the payload. You, you, will, you will finish uh, earlier. Uh, or the UI threads or the FPS. So those are something, uh, those are tools that are very common on the native land, but they quite break with the JavaScript workflow. Uh, you can use it, of course, okay, but you need to uh, open up the Android Studio or the Xcode, enable the debugging mode. If you're with Xcode and you have everything only with React Native, then you need the provisioning files for debugging and so on. Um, 
and and you I suppose that you are not uh, using the native tools with real devices because then you move to a uh, very, very at the bottom circle. So manual linking is the other thing. This is this was something common, mm, but with the new versions of React Native, uh, they introduced the React Native link. Uh, it's basically like a system of templating for the native file, files, so it's easier now. But there are libraries that doesn't support it, and maybe you need it for the core business of your application, or maybe it doesn't work because shit happens. And then you have to open whatever editor you're using and go to mess with native code. So here's the statement. At the end, most of the people who's using React Native, or like, like everyone who's using React Native, uh, we're JavaScript developers. And it's not that easy to change to Objective-C or Java or Swift, or Swift kind of, but well, it's another world, right? Uh, yeah, and the hard integration was about uh, the tools that are linked, like, like the one that I mentioned before, but for example, linked to events, sensors, orientations, the, the kind of stuff, it's, it's difficult to use the native tools from the JavaScript perspective. Uh -huh. Animations. Okay, the, the animations, now it's a bit of a pain, because the animations change completely. Like the design, the design was a change on the parting, here comes again. Uh, for us, most of the animations are from the CSS perspective, right? And we, we make transitions because nothing happens. Because the transitions, right, we, we are teach that they are easy for the GPU and the CPU to render, so we use it and they are super cool, that's fantastic. But when you move to React Native, you have a thing that we are gonna see right now that's called the bridge, okay? The bridge is the evil. Why? Because the bridge is the connection between the packager, is the process who's running the JavaScript, and the threads that are running on the, on the phone. And the bridge is really sensitive to the performance. So basically, it works like a, like a, like a phone call, right? And you are, you are telling them some instructions, and sometimes the bridge is telling you some things that happen. Uh, you cannot pollute this bridge because then the application will go super slow. And when I mean super slow, I mean that you want to kill the FPS completely. Even a scroll will be something difficult to make. So be aware of the bridge. Then what's the solution? So for the animations, they make a completely reset of all the components of React Native because when you are going to make some animations in React Native, you get the anim animate or animation uh, component that basically is animation dot view again dot text dot scroll view dot image whatever and uh, it works in a declarative uh, way so basically what you are saying is so hey react native here comes an animation this animation will start like this with this value here comes the value and it will finish like that with this other value what does it mean it means that you need some mathematical knowledge. And, and here comes the problem for most of the JavaScript developers. Because you are making a thing that's called a polynomial, right? So, which is like, if you have a point here, and another point here, and another point here, and you want, for example, a uh, logistic polynomial, it will make a, a curve like that. Because it will calculate all the points in the middle. But I cannot pass all the time. You are now in 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3. Right? I cannot make this. So I make the polynomial regression, which is like this position, for example, this is the thing with this value. I call it one, right? So it will finish with an interpolation, which is another mathematical knowledge. Uh, I don't care about the position, but the value uh, instead of one will be three. So it will move up your uh, view, whatever, uh, your position, three times, right? This, this, this is like the, the idea that you have. Uh, we are kind of fact because we can use things like animation timing and you can hook up to the same time, right? When the animation finish. But this is something that you cannot relate into because maybe the UI thread blocks for some seconds so the animation finish later or something like that, shit happens. 
and there is no ACK acknowledged on the bridge. So you cannot hook up to the finish of the animation safely. You can retry and there are strategies to, to, to try to make it better, but you, you cannot hook up. So here comes the basic problem of the bridge that we're gonna see right now. But first, a note that they introduced, I don't remember, but in the 38 or 39, um, an extra component on the API of React Native, which is called easing. And they make like the most common calculations of the interpolation for us. Like the cubic baser, easing in, easing out, right? Just like CSS at the end, it's another way of, of making the same. So, the bridge. Here, the, the interesting thing is, is to, to make the simile in the metaphor like Dante. Because at the middle of the Divine Comedy, Dante faces the gates of the city of this. Uh, for Dante, it was a clearly difference between those who make a scene passively and those who make the scene, the scene actively. So in the, inside the city of this, in the lower rings, is where the harder punishments were. And this is the same. The bridge, as I told you, is the evil, is the performance killer. The bridge at the end, uh, how it works is that you have your packager, and the packager automatically is making some instructions, right? These instructions, like I want a, a, a BU, the BU needs a text inside, the text has these values and these children and whatever. Those are the instructions. So the packager says, okay, I'm gonna make a JSON and serialize it. So because the communication is really fucked up between the packager and the, and the phone, uh, the bridge is gonna serialize the JSON into a string, which is very dangerous, and send it to the bridge to the black box, which is called the, the phone. At this moment, when it goes to the, to the phone, you, you, you cannot see nothing. You don't see what happens, if it fails, if it, do, if it doesn't fail, if it's done, you don't have a callback, and I don't mean a callback like a syntax callback. You don't have a, an acknowledge. You don't know when, when things, are, things are done. Uh, so you cannot hook to, to here. The other problem is that the phones are designed like a computer. So they have a CPU, and the CPU has some threads, right? So they work in parallel. This is the thing, this is how a phone works. But JavaScript is an infinite ML loop. So to sync these things, and if I send an instruction here, and another instruction, another instruction in JavaScript, if I send one instruction, and then goes the loop, and the loop cannot catch the next instruction, we'll get the third instruction, and then we'll catch the second instruction whenever, okay? But you cannot do this against, against the phone, because maybe the instructions fuck up. Maybe the second instruction, the third instruction, sorry, needs the second to be known. So the communication is synchronous, and all of you know the problems of synchronous, okay? The performance is, is, is done. But, <laughs> and here's the, the interesting thing, um, the acknowledge, if you can, if you need and you can actually make some kind of acknowledge, will be asynchronous, because it will be an event. The same thing that I told you, that the packager is, is making instructions, serializing and sending to the bridge, the, the native line can do the same backwards. They can make some instructions, serialize it, send it to the bridge, and your packager, your packager will get it. And you can hook up to, to this. You can make some listeners, right? In React Native, you can make a very simple listener like the app state. It's actually the, the user is using the app or is, is in background, right? So this is the, the phone who's sending this event to, to the packager. Uh, so you are sending, bear with me, you are sending instructions that shall be uh, followed synchronously but if you want to hook to them, this is asynchronously. So you can break it again, <laughs> because maybe you have a listener for an event that needs an instruction to be done before, but because it's asynchronous, right, it's gonna, it's gonna come back uh, before the other thing. That's why when you're working with your native, you will notice that absolutely all the listeners has the catch uh, interface. Because shit happens a lot, even for opening uh, the browser, for example, you make, it, you make something like linking open URL, 
and you have the catch at the end because even this thing can, can break up. Because at the end, what, what, what is happening down, down React Native is, hey, you have a browser, this is one instruction. Okay, so open the browser, this is another instruction. And on the ACK of this instruction, uh, navigate to this URL. So if something is breaking in the middle, it will fail all the thing of opening up uh, a browser. Uh, and why is this important? Because for 90% of the time you will be developing with your native, you will notice nothing here. But think about this. Uh, the reach for performance reasons, again, uh, can be polluted. You can send a lot of events to the bridge and you can fuck the bridge and it will be silent. So you need to continually uh, make some inspections, audit the bridge and know what's happening there. You can actually, there, there is, uh, well, there are a lot of tutorials on the internet that you can easily find, but you can actually uh, hook on, on, the, on the final function who's sending the message and you can see like, very simple console log or, or listening the thread or listening the event, how many messages are being sent right there, right? Uh, and, and this is like, if you, if you are going out here with just one tip, we'll be there, audit the bridge. Next, more pain, testing. And this is important, always do testing. If you don't have testing, your product isn't finished. So, the, the main problem here is that uh, the testing solutions are very immature because React Native is actually an immature technology. Uh, you can think uh, about two lands here again because the people who's developing with uh, uh, native applications, they have their own suites for Android and iOS, right? Problem is, again, like the, with the native tools, uh, they some sort of break the JavaScript workflow. It, it's very difficult to have some things tested with JavaScript and then also trigger some events that they are gonna test in blah, blah, blah. If you think, like, uh, you think about the native land testing like another complete suite, that's okay. Like for example, end-to-end. -end. A lot of people is using the suites of native land for end-to-end -end testing, but they are very difficult to integrate. And also, you will need to change some native code which, as I told you before, is not that simple. And the other problem, and the problem that we are gonna focus here, is the JavaScript plan. Uh, for me, the main problem, and probably for you, when you go into testing great native applications, is that you cannot manipulate the DOMs that you are uh, creating, right? Everything is static. It's uh, static testing, which is super painful for the testing, because basically the only thing that you can do is a thing that is called shallow render. Maybe you uh, know about them because en Enzyme from Airbnb. Uh, shallow render at the end, the only thing that's doing is uh, run this function, get the result, serialize it, and make a snapshot or check if something is in there. But at the end you are getting a function. The function will be the, the render component. Uh, you are getting a JSON. You cannot change nothing. You cannot say something like fun or click or move or Nothing like that. Uh, so the idea is that when you're working with React Native applications, you want to expose the most components uh, that you can. So if you have the typical Redux uh, container component parting, right, you will have the container very simple and it's exposed. The container, not, not the connected to Redux function, just the container. So I can test the container and instead of making the manipulations, like click here, la la la, all these things, I can pass them different props every time that they want to test something. Uh, like a drawer, like the drawer can have a prop, it's open, right? So I can pass the it's, it's open true. I will expect that there is a drawer in the, in the serialized function return, and if I pass it false, I will expect that this drawer is, is in there. So this, this will be the equivalent to the manipulation testing. The other problem that you will have, uh, a React Native application isn't finished if you didn't test it in real devices. Absolutely true. Uh, we, for example, were working like seven months and then we tried an iPhone 4, 6, no, SA, something like that, the, the small one, uh, in the emulator was perfect but when you plug into the real devices, it just simply pop up and then break down the application. I, 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 today, I still don't know why. We just change some things and, and fix it. Yes, but 
For, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it's something weird, and probably what I, I have some clues, but probably was the bridge was extremely populated for the CPU of this uh, of this phone, because uh, if you didn't know, but when you're using Android and the Android emulator, the Android emulator is also emulating the hardware, so you can say I have only two gigs of RAM and so on and so on, but the simulator of Xcode. It goes with the 16 uh, gigabytes of your Mac computer, no problem, everything is fine, let's go. So mm, you need to try on real devices, and you cannot fake it. Uh, and real device testing is another pain. The first one is just connected, right? Because uh, usually you are virtualizing everything, uh, and this will be the equivalent like using a Phantom JS, but with a real device. Uh, the Phantom at the end, if you are not using headless, it opens a Chrome. Uh, application and runs everything in there. Uh, the, the good thing is that once you get this, this uh, connection properly done, well, it's more or less like the simulated one, but it will be painful for sure. And the other thing is for those used to extreme programming and the kind of things, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, continuous deployment, forget it because it's impossible, at least for, no, at least for iOS because they need a manual review. So it's impossible. You cannot do complete continuous deployment. You can, you can get to the point that you submit your application, but then some guy, whatever, it will go to the application, review it manually, and approve it. So continuous deployment is impossible. Uh, you can do continuous delivery. You can go for this. Uh, it's OK, though we found out that the best way to work with the, with the continuous delivery thing is to automatically push to test flight for iOS and the Android beta for Android. Because from the market, you can promote all the testing applications to production automatically. So at the end, it will be like the same. And all your beta testers, maybe your coworkers at the company or whatever, they can try like almost real time. So that's kind of cool. Though the painful here is that it's deployment is impossible. So work. Now the, the tip, there is a thing called code push. With code push, you can push changes to production directly without going uh, through the market processes. Uh, note of attention, you cannot change the intent of the application, right? That's, you cannot submit a calculator and with code push change it to a video game. That, that's not fair. Uh, it will ban you. And for now, it's free. But the people at Microsoft don't think like that. So. Don't rely too much into code push for now, at least. This is my favorite, the router, also the picture. So the router, the router is in the seventh circle, which is quite down, if you think about it. There are only nine. Uh, it's so painful that even uh, the Facebook team say that they won't develop an uh, official solution for the router, because the router is a very special thing uh, every app needs uh, their own router, very customized, and there is no a silver bullet for this problem. If you go to NPM and search uh, React Native uh, Router, you get more than 100 packages. So, th so this is the thing. Right now there are two, uh, and, and they are growing, uh, and they are growing strong. The one from Airbnb and the one from Wix. Uh, they are cool, but the problem is that all of them right now they face the, the same dichotomy, which is a, a, a problem really fuck up. If you go with best UX, what you will go is with uh, navigation experimental if you're using old versions of React Native. If you're, use, if you're using 40 and beyond, it's deprecated. It, it, it was called experimental, so what do you expect? Uh, if you go with this, uh, you get a very cool UX, um, some kind of UI. Because everything is declarative. Uh, for example, for iOS, you get the gesture uh, sweeping out that you go back. Uh, the titles are already cropped. Everything is fine. It, it works perfectly for the iPad. You can place the buttons on the side, blah, 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 all the things. Uh, problems. You want to navigate, uh, for example, say you have a Saga or a Redux tank. You have Redux connected, for example, and you want to navigate from them, impossible because you only can navigate through the React context. So the only things that can navigate are React components. OK, this is very cool when I have a button, right? But maybe I have 
uh, nothing crazy. I have a payment process. Once the payment process finish, <coughs> redirect me to the thank you page. Okay, impossible. Impossible, no, but the solution is super hacky. Okay, and yeah, like here. So what's the other, the other, the other part? You have the powerfulness. I like it. Uh, I have the router connected to Redux. I can just dispatch an action, and I can navigate whatever they want. I can change the history, or I can uh, uh, render some breadcrumbs because I have access to my own uh, history and location objects, right? Uh, if I want to connect it to a React context, I can do it again. There's no problem. Things. Uh, you, want, you want the gesture? Good luck. Because you have to, usually you have a phone, right? And the phone has a screen, and you place the scene, which is the width of the screen. That's cool. You have to have the gestures of, from iOS, then you need to place an app shell which is thir uh, three times the size of your screen and it's a scroll view, but it's locked. So once it's moved, it moves enough, then you have to calculate the pan gesture recognizer, make your own interpolations, move back, right? That's the problem. But you get the Redux thing. Uh, if you want my opinion, usually I think that powerfulness is better because at the end, hooking up a library uh, to making the animations and so on, it's easier and, uh, and, and can be done. But on the other hand, this one is completely uh, hooked to the framework, completely hooked to the framework. You only can navigate from, from the context. So in, at the moment that you need something different, you're trapped. Here you can do some sort of things. Our application is made uh, with this approach. Uh, and the iOS users, if you try, you will notice that the gesture isn't done yet. Uh, but can't be done with a lot of effort, but can't be done. In the other way, it's impossible. Uh, 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 I, mm, of course, who say Redux, say Mob X, and all the state managers that you want to use. Okay. Build tools. This is a problem that is uh, common. For me, it's the only, the only common point for the React Native developers and the native developers. Because it's the same pain to sign an application for iOS, uh, either you are using React Native or not. Uh, so many of you already ship something to produ an application to production. OK, OK, cool. So the idea is that there are two completely different processes. That's one thing. So you have to learn. Uh, two times the same concept, which is uh, building up an application, one for Android, another one for iOS. Uh, the Android one is kind of simpler if you have everything well set up or you are setting up the first time. Uh, because it works basically like, uh, uh, it's, it's an asynchronous code signing. Uh, so it works like the SSH protocol. You have the private key and the public key. It's not called like that, but at the end it's the same. You have your bundle identifier, something like that, and you have the uh, key store. And the key store is like your private key. If you lost the private the, the key store, which is the private key, you cannot uh, deploy again to the to the Play Store. Never. So for us, for example, that we have an application from 2013, right? Something like that. It was like, okay, let's make some archaeology. I look on, on the Gmails for two weeks until we find the key store, because if not, we have to deploy a new application to the Play Store. There is no other solution. But it's kind of easy. Then comes iOS. iOS and Apple, right, wants to handle and control everything. So you have, you have to code signing, and for code signing, you need uh, like the, like the developer permission that came from an iTunes Connect account, and then you have some provisioning files to run in a real device, and then you have the pen 12 to sign the, the file that you're using to sign in the code. So it's complex, it's complex. Uh, there is some hope here, which is called Fastlane. In case you don't know, fastlane.tools. Uh, you can see the different approaches from Android and iOS in there, because they have like, 10 solutions for iOS and one or two for Android. So it's something like that. And the tools are like shipping up to beta. So, um, so it's not, nothing really complex. Um, but yeah, it, it, will be, it will be painful for sure. And you need to go again to the native tools because you will need to use the Android Studio and the Xcode and go to the info list 
which is the file of configurations for, from Xcode, and so on. Well, at the end, we, do, we, are, we, are, we are not used to that kind of, of configurations. And maybe the Xcode says, oh, yeah, this is called, uh, I don't know, the bundle identifier. You know how the bundle identifier associates to your uh, items connect? It's a string match. So if you write ULA box, where it work, and you fuck it up, and then you connect, you say, oh, it's called ULA books. It never works. You are done. Finish. <laughs> Next. Uh, the other problem is versioning. And it's not a problem, like a super technical problem. It's a problem of mindset. Because you have the code versioning, the app versioning, the bundle versioning, the iTunes versioning, the Play Store versioning, your own source code versioning, like semantic versioning and that kind of stuff. Uh, handle everything. Well, it's quite complex. And what is the problem? That I bet whatever you want that you will find yourself against the wall, uh, against the, the screen in this case, a lot of times because it, uh, all the, all those those processes, binaries for iOS and APK for Android, check the build number at the end of the process. So if you build everything is okay, okay, pa 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 pa, perfect, perfect. Oh, at the end, 20 minutes later, you're in the 22 and it's already 22. Try again. And it's like, please, can you, can you check it before? Um, another problem, okay, with the with the build tools is that they used to fail. Don't worry because they used to fix themselves again. But they used to fail. If you go to the to, to, to the React Native repo right now and go to the issues and just go to all the issues and sort for most commented, the the first five issues are about this. Like the very famous uh, CEF bundle identifier, which is an error with 200 comments, because basically you are working one day, boom, 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 came the other day, and your Excel doesn't open. Solution: uninstall and install, uninstall and install. This is the official solution: uninstall and install, and suddenly it works again. Uh, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. And the Facebook team, neither them, uh, they know what, what, why this is happening. But good thing for the. Uh, Facebook guys, they are working really hard in solving these kind of things, and the new version, well, they are improving uh, th th these problems. Okay, beta testing is the, the final thing, because I told you, and I recommend you to, uh, with the call, uh, p -p 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 continuous, continuous delivery, to push to the testing regions, because it's called test flight for iOS, and, and Android beta, play beta, I don't know the name. Android Beta, I think, for, for the Play Store. Uh, problem is the management, again. Uh, usually for iOS, for example, if you want something to be on the test flight, uh, the easiest way is that you have the same domain, uh, um, email domain, like at ulabox.com. If not, you are making like an open beta, and the open beta needs special uh, permissions. If you go to the Play Store, it's like, super complex to make the beta, for real. It's like, uh, th there is no information anywhere. So you have to be trying, you get a link. If you go to the link, at the first time, usually it says, oh no, you are already in the project, but you are not. You have to reload, reload ah, and then it works. And I'm, I'm not kidding you. This is, this is really how it works. Because for example, Android beta is in beta. <laughs> so it fails. Okay, it's cool. Uh, we try another approach that, that you can think about, uh, so, uh, especially at the beginning, uh, which is I generate the IPK for production, and then I push it to the Google Drive and share the link. Because in, uh, with an Android phone, if you download an APK, you can install it directly, no problem. So this is different approach, but at the end, you are bypassing the official market, and this is not a good idea at the end. So. Let's go to the last one. Uh, in the Dante's history, at the end, at the bottom of the inferno, of the hell, it was Satanas. It's the, the place where Satanas lived. This is Satanas. Satanas is a, is a very cool guy with three faces, and each of the faces is uh, eating one, one guy. In, in the middle is Judas, in case you, you want some history. Upgrade. What do you mean with, with upgrade? Probably, and with very difference, the most painful thing with React Native is upgrading React Native. Like you are in the 40, and I want to go to the 43. Very difficult. 
they have, uh, th they know that this is very difficult. They develop a special tool only for do this thing. Uh, it uses Git uh, on the back, so it makes like the, it's using the Git uh, diff algorithm. But what's the problem here? That they forget that we are JavaScript developers. So when you're using this thing, the, the Git upgrade, usually everything goes well, but all the files that are generated automatically by the native LAN. So you go to merge manually. Uh, think of, for example, the info list and the generated info list. And it's like, if, if you see someday this file, is like a slash, asterisk, a lot of numbers, who cares, a slash, enter, a lot of space, it, it, and it's like, oh, here's a difference. And, well, uh, I don't know what is this number. It's just a number for real. And it's like, yeah, 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 uh, merge it manually. Mm, 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 I'm sorry, I, I can do that, really? Really, I can do that. Uh, even Facebook, uh, is sometimes they recommend you to just uh, create a new React Native application on the, on the version that you want to and port your code to, 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 to this new application because it will be easier. So here's the problem. Um, another thing to be really aware, aware of is that sometimes it's impossible. And this is, impossible is a word that we are not used to uh, as developers in general. But sometimes it's actually impossible because you have a, a strong dependency that relies into a, a lower version and you cannot update React Native because this dependency is not ready. So you have two options. Don't upgrade React Native or go to your delivery, make a pull request, change everything you have to change. It will be a pain. Then push this uh, to NPM and upgrade everything. Uh, this happens, this is called the React Native 43 crisis if you, if you look for it in Google, because they ship 43 depending on React Alpha 16. Uh, you can think about how many libraries uh, don't support React Alpha. Like, I don't know, all of them. <laughs> so we, we actually try and we finish in the 42 because it was impossible. We have uh, uh, libraries, especially, this is especially problematic with the libraries that uh, they are hooking up with the native LAN, like uh, device information or native events, that kind of stuff. Uh, it was simply impossible. We actually check it, we go to, to we review all, all, all the pieces of code and it, it, it was impossible. So the, the tip here is uh, you actually, you, you really need to upgrade React Native, maybe you don't. So don't, don't the, the problem with the 43 crisis, it was that they talk before about uh, they, they talk about flat list a lot before uh, the upgrade. They were telling us flat list is amazing. You will uh, forget uh, list view is super cool, super fast, very good performance. So everyone was super excited to try this new thing. But ha shit happens. Wait for the 45, 46 because it's, in, it's unstable. And the unstable solutions is just uh, if you look for uh, in, the, in the internet, right? For some solutions about the upgrade thing, you will find out that even the official ones are stable. They are still changing the, like the Git upgrade or they are suggesting things like I told you, the create a new uh, application and port your code to, to this. So the best thing you can do for upgrading React Native, just as Dante did, is uh, be careful, be very careful. So basically we finish and I want to remember you that even that it was a lot of pain in these nine circles, just like Dante, he found that the only way to the paradise was through the hell. And this is real.